morning, friends, and thank you for being here to listen for just a few moments to somebody very near and dear to our hearts, somebody that we all love and care about. I'm here with Dr. Ruth Anderson. Ruth has recently gone through the devastating fire experience in Colorado, where homes were destroyed, over 600 homes that were destroyed over there. Over a, thousand. Over a thousand homes. Thank you for that correction. And one of those thousand was Ruth's home. And Ruth is here now to share a message with all of us. Ruth, I am so glad that you are here. I've missed you like crazy. We all have. And we're so ready to just embrace whatever you want to share with us today. You know, I've really wanted to come on and say hello and let you know we are okay. We have been held by Archangel Michael and Divine Mother the entire time. And I've never felt afraid because of that. And actually, Terry, I want to start with what happened before the fires. So we went, <clears throat> excuse me, that's from breathing smoke, by the way. Um, Archangel Michael, two years ago, had told me to take my family to Galveston, Texas. I had never, why? Galveston? <laughs> it just wasn't any. So we went, we had a fabulous time. And for the holidays, we wanted to get away and especially get our senior in high school away so we could have real time with her. And I heard to go to Galveston. So we went to Galveston. And the entire time we were in Galveston, Archangel Michael was so present. I almost like I've never felt him so present before. And I felt, <clears throat> excuse me, I felt so protected and so buoyed up by him that one morning I actually said, what? Why are you so present? I'm like, I'm loving it, but why? What, what is going on? And um, then on the 30th, we were only gone for five nights. So on the 30th, we had gotten a call from friends that, you know, wildfire in Louisville area. And then we got a call from the sheriff, you know, the reverse 911 saying, get out. So um, we called our house sitter, who's Dido Clark, who's one of the tech support for EWN. And um, had a friend come and help her get our dogs out of the house. And I was on the phone with them while they were trying to exit our neighborhood, which took about an hour in 70 to 90 mile an hour winds with smoke so thick they could hardly see. And actually a car in front of them, a piece of steel came up and pierced through the windshield right in front of them. I mean, thank God the man wasn't killed. It was that scary. And when I was talking with Dido, I said, just take the dogs and go. You know, don't worry about a thing. Because you never really think everything's going to be gone. Everything is gone. I mean, the house is flat. There is, even the steel beams are bent and curled. And you just think, what happened? what happened how you know that it was so hot they were talking about heat of like 2000 degrees you can't recognize what were the cars you it's there is some brick standing it's it's kind of fascinating in a horrifying way <clears throat> and neighborhoods were it's like hopscotch neighborhoods were missed other neighborhoods totally destroyed in our cul-de-sac Two homes were burned, I mean destroyed, our neighbors and ours, and three were damaged and the other ones are fine. And you can't, I can't, say why did that happen to us and it didn't happen to somebody else. That, that thinking just doesn't enter my mind. The only thing we can do is have control over how we're going to respond. That's truly the only control we have at this point. And we have been so incredibly blessed 
to be able to stay at a friend's. We've got our dogs with us. So many people have volunteered rooms in their home, clothes, you know, borrowing a car that, I mean, it's so generous. And <clears throat> just even the other day, I was talking on, I was in a store and I was trying to buy some dishes. And um, I got a call from the person whose home we were going to move to the next day. And she has COVID. Just found out, no symptoms, but just found out she has COVID. So we couldn't move there, but I didn't know where, where we were going to stay. And when I got off the phone with her, the sales lady said, are you okay? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure I was probably gray by that point. And she, I told her the story and she said, I've got two bedrooms and two baths. If you need a place, come, come to our place. I'd known her 30 seconds, but that's how people are reacting out here. So I have heard so many stories of people that are worse off than we are. Um, one family did get their stuff in their car, got out of town, their home is completely flattened, staying in a hotel. Somebody stole their car with their life treasures in it. So, you know, there's, somebody's always worse off. Absolutely. Somebody is always worse off and needs your care and your compassion or people that didn't have insurance or people that were underinsured or, you know, I mean, there, I think we only lost three people considering a thousand, over a thousand homes burned, only losing three is a miracle, yeah. but, but three people passed, you know? So, you know, there's times for licking your wounds, but thankfully that's only about 2% of the day. The rest of the time is, what should we do today? Is there somebody that we can help today? So that's what it's been looking like at our house. <laughs> and I certainly know, Ruth, that in the midst of all that's going on with this chaos and with you trying to like reassemble, you're also helping people there. We're trying to, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's so beautiful. You know, it's when we have crisis that people show their best part of themselves. And I'm so happy to hear that people are stepping up. I know there's been stores, commercial um, people in the area that are stepping up to help the, the ones affected and, you know, donations that are coming in. And um, I know I, I haven't, I don't watch the news, so I haven't seen how other people come in from other places to help with um, you know providing things and starting the rebuilding process I can't even wrap my brain around what that's going to look like because you have snow there and I'm like how do you even rebuild a home right now with snow and frozen ground the well, whole thing is that, just... the, the infrastructure is damaged the mm -hmm. water pipes there's no street lights there's no there's no <laughs> <laughs> there's no and you know you we've gone to look at the home and there's like six feet of ash so how do I mean, the foundations have to go I mean they they're not so somebody has to come in and just like scoop and scrape and there are different organizations that will come and help you sift through all of your stuff and I can't fathom that there's anything. And, you know, the, the things that I hold dear, the, what has been fascinating for me, Terry, truly, is figuring out what I hold dear. Because, you know, when you've got a house full of stuff, you don't, you don't really think about it. So if you end up with zero, <clears throat> we had um, five days worth of clothes, which was a godsend, truly a godsend. <clears throat> But I couldn't, I couldn't put myself in the emotional space of thinking about what, what have I lost? And woke up uh, one morning, sleep is, you know, a little hard to come by, um, but Divine Mother was with me. And Divine Mother took me room to room in my home. And in my mind's eye, I would look around and if there was something, most rooms I was like, yeah, I'm good. 
I'm good. It, but it, I don't care. But there were a couple things. Um, my father had written a poem in particular that I was going to frame, which of course is gone. Um, and she said to me, it's written in your heart. And I thought, yes, it is. It absolutely is. And, um, you know, there were just a couple little, like maybe five things like that. And um, you go, man, you had a whole house and you only missed five things? That's pretty good. You know, that's, I, pretty good. that's pretty good. I, I know people that have pictures of my kids growing up. I can get those. Yeah, I had made some Shutterfly books. I've got photos of my kids growing up there, you know? So, <clears throat> so many things with the digital age you can replace. You know, I don't have a copy of any of my books. I can go on Amazon and get a copy of my books. There's so few things that you really can't replace. What a beautiful outlook. And I know I've seen some of the pictures you have shared with me, some of, yeah. of what it looks like now and knowing what it looked like before and having been in your home and the energy there, it just, it's heart wrenching to see that just gone. Well, the energy is still there. <laughs> the energy is still there and you're still here, which I'm so, so grateful for that yeah. you were away and that, you know, we, we never know. We can look back and see the perfection of how spirit tells us, go here, you know, go here. You're not need, You're not supposed to be at one place at one time because they knew that something was going to happen. I thank God right. that you're well, safe. Yeah. And I have to tell you, and I, I think Terry remembers this, about a week before we went out of town, Terry and I were doing the meditation and I said to her afterwards, I wonder what it would be like to start completely over with nothing. And I don't know why I said that, other than I think spirit was giving me, a, we're getting you ready. We're, we're giving you a little hint here and there. I had um, gotten a hint. My, my daughters have done musicals for years and years. And so we have all these videos. Have <laughs> all these videos of their shows. And I heard, why don't you take them in and get them duplicated? And I didn't do it. And I should have done it because that was like two weeks before Christmas. I wouldn't have gotten them back and they would be safe in a store somewhere. I should have done it, you know? So I think. We can't do shouldas. We can't do shouldas, but we can learn from the experience that when we get that nudge, when we hear those words, it's like there's a reason for that. <laughs> and pay attention. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There, there are no shoulds. There's really only gratitude for the blessings, truly. Truly. Because you know what? no matter how uncomfortable or inconvenient this is, there are people across the world that would give the my teeth to be in the situation I am in. And I know that, and I'm not taking that for granted. Ruth, you are so beautiful. Thank you for sharing from your heart with us today. I love you, Tara. I love you so much. And we're all wrapping our arms around you and holding you up through all of this. I know. <laughs> um, and I know that I think I know that you watched the prayer circle that we did for you and for um, Megan Jamorio. And our dear Kathy Caputo did the opening prayer. And I loved her message and her words that you're already on the other side of this. Yeah. 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 But it is a fascinating time to live through and it's a fascinating time to be a parent. <laughs> so, oh, yes. So yes. My, my first daughter. Uh, yeah. Blessings to all my of first your family. <laughs> I know. My first daughter got to deal with COVID her senior year and now this one gets to deal with losing her home her senior year. So, um, nice. 
Yeah. But, no more senior years. <laughs> look, can we be done with high school now? Yeah, exactly. I just, I just keep telling myself what an opportunity to teach our kids resilience because who yeah, knows what else is. we're going to encounter. It certainly is. My, my heart breaks for them going through this experience. But I think I know that it's they're going to be stronger. They'll be stronger for what they've been through. Yeah. And they'll be ready for whatever else might come up. So, That's right. Yeah. yeah. Only upward from here. Thank you so much, Ruth. I know you've got uh, to be somewhere. And I just love and appreciate you. Thank you for taking the time today to talk with me and share with all of us this part of your life, your experience, and the love. Thank you. I love you, Tara. I love you. Bye, friends. So much love to all of you. Keep wrapping your arms around our Dr. Ruth Anderson and her entire family. Keep lifting her up in prayer. Prayer makes a big difference. And so much gratitude for everyone that's doing that and for all that are who have been asking about Ruth and how she's doing. Here she is. And thank <laughs> you again, Ruth. I love you. I love y'all. Thank you. Bye, everybody. everybody.